Why should you wear full cut trousers? Now, I've gotten a lot of comments and I've been called all manners of names for wearing my trousers the way I do. Uh, for those of you who follow us on all our social platforms, uh, you've been entertained by the comments, of course, as I have or as have I. And so uh, this is a conversation uh, to talk about why the prof wears full court trousers and why you should. By the way, uh, I want to take this opportunity to thank all of you for your comments, uh, the humor, uh, sometimes the acrimony. Uh, we all enjoy it. I certainly enjoy it all. Uh, I thank you for following us, for the subscription on YouTube, across all our other social platforms. And if you haven't already done so, you certainly owe yourself uh, the, shall I say, privilege, if I can say that, of subscribing or following us on any or all of all our social channels. Now let's get into it. What are narrow trousers or what are slim fit trousers? A little bit of history. Before the war, or before the Second World War, which is now called the war, trousers were worn very high at the natural waist. They were cut very full, similar to what I have on. With the war came things such as rationing. But more importantly, uh, the military uh, regalia at the time uh, consisted of trousers, plain front trousers, and a belt, military officer's uniform. And after the war, that sort of transferred or sort of was carried over into civilian wear. And a lot of designers sort of ran with it. And if you look at the slimmer trousers of the 1940s and 50s, they weren't nearly as slim as the trousers you see today. But as with everything, designers take license and they go even a step further. And so we've gone, seen trousers go slimmer and slimmer and slimmer and slimmer to the point where literally they're quite like ladies' uh, tights or leggings today. Although that trend is beginning, thankfully, uh, to reverse itself. Now, let's talk about the wide leg or the full cut. I am wearing what you might consider a full cut pair of trousers. It is one at the natural waist and it hangs from the waist. Essentially, it hangs from the shoulders because it's one with a pair of suspenders and it allows the trousers to drape properly. Now, if you're a man, such as I am, uh, most men have fairly muscular legs and you want to have sufficient room in your trousers to allow for comfort and for mobility. Most importantly, um, you've all seen some of these narrow leg trousers or slim fit trousers uh, we see on the streets today. And quite frankly, they just look reprehensible uh, if I can find the right word for it, but they look almost sort of, they're painful to look at. You almost sort of feel the discomfort of the person wearing the trousers. So this is the difference between sort of your slim cut or your wide leg trousers. Your slim cut, they're cut very close to the leg. They follow the lines of the body, much like your spandex or sort of a lady's uh, 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 legging. And full cut trousers are cut to show the shape. However, they stay away from the body. They stand away from the body. They should stand away from your body. Your trousers should not cling. They should not cling to your body. Now, let's talk about shape. Both narrow trousers and full cut trousers, they start about the same measurement at the waist or the hips. Uh, because of course, your waist measurement is constant. So it starts the same here, and the difference occurs as you go down with full cut trousers, it's cut fuller from the hips down, full in the hips to accommodate your hips, and then it flows all the way down. Now, depend, de depending on your preference, some prefer them cut straight all the way down. I mean, we've seen Oxford bags, you know, where literally trousers are cut all the way down full to the bottom. I am not suggesting you wear Oxford bags, but at a minimum, there should be a gentle taper, a gentle, very gentle taper from the knee to the hem. 
I recommend just about two inches. So the difference between the circumference at the knee at the hem should just be about two inches. In my case, I wear about a 10 inch diameter at the hem and about a 12 inch diameter at the knee. Whereas with skinnier trousers, of course, those dimensions are going to be significantly, significantly less. Now, Let's talk about why you should wear full cut trousers. And I'm going to approach this subject from two. I'm going to frame it. Let me put it this way. I'm going to frame it from two completely different perspectives, from the top and from the bottom. And I'll explain what I mean. From the top, we're going to talk about silhouette. And from the bottom, we're going to talk about hem width. I've said this any number of times on social media. When you look at a figure straight on, it should appear as a single unit from top to bottom. The eye should travel from the top to the bottom in a straight line without any material deviation from the mean. Meaning, if you're a man and you have fairly wide shoulders, well, most men, at least the ideal, archetypical masculine figure is wide shoulders, a, a strong torso, and sort of a narrow waist. And so even if you don't have it naturally, you are tailored to have wider shoulders, which is why we use extended shoulder extensions in our drape cut. So if you think about a male figure, you're wide in the shoulders. You don't want sort of that inverted Christmas tree look where you're wide in the shoulders and then you narrow all the way down to the hem of your trousers. You want to maintain a uniform line from your shoulder line all the way to the hem with very, very minimal deviation from the mean. And the only way to achieve this is to have your trousers cut quite full. If you look at me, have a look at me. Look at my shoulders. The eye travels in a straight line from my shoulders following the lines of my body down to the hem of my trousers. And the only way I can achieve that is by having my trousers caught quite full, such that they pick up my jacket right here at the hips. If I had narrow trousers, it wouldn't work because right here, there would be a discontinuum between the top and the bottom. And so silhouette means the eye should travel from the top, shoulders all the way to the hem of the trousers in a continuous line, also standing by the side. The eye should travel from the shoulder all the way down to the hem of the trouser, just like that. It should appear as a single block like that, similar to when I stand in front of you, the, the, the frontal view, it's a continuous line from the shoulders all the way to the bottom. Similarly, when I stand sideways, your eye should travel straight from the top to the bottom in a continuous line. There shouldn't be any material deviation. And the problem with narrow trousers is that the, the trousers truncate the human body in two. And so you look like two parts of a body put together. Now, let's look at the other perspective. Let's start from the bottom. Hem width or trouser hem width. I've talked about this in a prior YouTube video tutorial. However, there is something called the golden ratio. I didn't invent it. Uh, it was invented even before Michelangelo, who was very famous. A lot of his works were based on the golden ratio. And he employed it to good effect. I don't know why, but the golden ratio works, which means that every figure looks just better if it's broken into thirds. One third, one third, one third. So a figure appears beautiful if it's one side two thirds and the other side one third. We've talked about it in relation to where you should wear your trousers and the human body. Similarly, the width of your shoes the hem width, I've talked about this, it should be about two thirds. The hem width of your trousers should be about two thirds the length of your shoe. Now, I wear a size 12 and a half UK shoe. 
And so the two-thirds equivalent, if you measure that in centimeters or in inches, the two-thirds equivalent of that is about 10 inches in diameter across that way. And so my trousers are 10 inches in diameter or 20 inches in circumference. And so your trousers should, to achieve that balance, should be about two-thirds the size of or the length of your shoe. The problem with not adhering to that principle is that if you're, say for instance, you have large legs or sort of a long foot, can you imagine having a long foot and wearing thin trousers? Your legs stick out like the proverbial Godzilla. So when you see Godzilla with sort of the, the, the feet sticking out that way, when you wear trousers with narrow or sort of what I call drain pipe trousers, your legs stick out of your trouser and it makes your, your shoes look inordinately large. They may not be so, but wearing thin trousers or sort of too slim drain pipe trousers, they exaggerate the size of your feet. To properly express the size of your feet, your trousers should correspond with your shoe length. Now, this is not a hard and fast rule because there are some very tall men who have small feet and vice versa. There are also small men who have very large feet. So we're going to forget or we're going to put aside those outliers for a moment and focus sort of the, I would say sort of, is it 76, 67% of the distribution curve? which is about two thirds of sort of humanity. So there are two things to bear in mind here again. The first thing is overall silhouette. When choosing your trousers, in closing or in wrapping all of this up, in either buying your trousers, choosing your trousers, or having them made at your tailor, two things to bear in mind. Of course, there are any number of things to bear in mind, but I think these are the two critical things, and I call them bookmarks, right? Starting from the top, silhouette. The eye should travel in a continuous line from top to bottom in literally in a straight line with minimal deviation from the mean. There should be minimal interruption in the flow of the eye from the top to the bottom. Whether viewed from the front as I'm standing or from the side. The eye should travel in a very straight line. And to achieve this, the trousers need to be caught full enough. This is what we call silhouette in design. Unfortunately, even some of the best tailors do not understand this. And that is quite unfortunate uh, because they should, you would imagine, recommend to their clients or sort of be able to educate their clients. But Quite frankly, a lot of tailors don't even understand the basics of silhouette. So that's one. The second, of course, being the hem width of your shoes or the hem width of your trousers. They should be approximately two thirds the length of your shoe. Approximately two thirds the length of your shoe. For reasons I've explained, they minimize if you have a large feet or sort of, no matter the size of your feet, they keep your feet in balance, okay? So when you combine the bottom half, the hem and the silhouette, that sort of gives you sort of a good uh, two thumb or rule of thumb as to how to pick your trousers. So that's about it for this presentation. Um, it's meant to be a rather short one. And uh, the reason we've chosen to do this is because it's a rather controversial subject. Uh, I've been called all sorts of names uh, by those who don't understand why uh, we wear full cut trousers. And, and so we thought uh, it, was, uh, uh, it would be worth the effort to produce a segment that speaks specifically to this issue of what or how wide your trousers should be. So with that, I bring this presentation to a close. I thank you once again, and, I re and I'll say one more time, please follow us on all our social platforms. Uh, of course, please subscribe to this uh, YouTube channel, uh, forward the videos if you 
find any value in it, please pass the videos around to your friends and family on all our social platforms, Instagram, on uh, Facebook, uh, we're on, on our Discord community, of course. Certainly, you're most welcome to visit us at our home, at our main website, www.askoki.com. So with that, I say thank you for your patience, for sticking through this rather short presentation, and I look forward to seeing you on the next Ask Oki tutorial. Thank you, and goodbye. Prof. Mm -hmm.